I've I'm gonna find you. Okay, Here we are. I'll wait and make sure that we've got it the It says that the meeting is now streaming live, live on, on Facebook. Facebook. Welcome, 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 everyone. Ah. And thank you guys for joining us for a very, very special, special I'm gonna outrageously, outrageous. You guys have to understand that <laughs> we're we gonna are. use every word twice. Um interview with none other than one of our most favorite humans on the planet. And she is on a different planet from us. In fact, it's a continent, not a planet. Oh, <laughs> she lives in Mars. <laughs> Mom. Um, yes. Yeah, so you guys, um, this is yeah. Brittany. Sorry. The one and only pet girl, Brittany Young. I, she was one of our most favorite people. We were just talking a minute ago. It's been so long since we've seen your face and I am so uh, like full of butterflies and happy to see you right <laughs> now kind of focus, but we figured out it, it, it really, it feels like we've been friends for a lifetime, but it really has only been the last three years. We met at Super Zoo three years ago, which is yeah. crazy to me that it's only been three years. And I remember the moment that we met and like uh -huh. how, like oh, when we walked into uh, Rodney Habib's um, you guys were doing filming for hotel room else. and you guys were like all filming about flea and tick medications. And you guys were like all talking about that kind of stuff, just like going into <laughs> And then, and then we were like, oh my God, it's the pet girl. It was, it was so much fun. It was so much fun. So thank and you. Then, and then I was like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Don't scare Bullseye for everyone joining that really wants to know who this beautiful kitty is. This is Bullseye, baby Bullseye, her beautiful little girl. Hi, baby girl. Oh my God, oh. she's the most precious little baby girl on the planet. She's such a love. Okay, so we've um, so thank yammered you. on and on about yes. how in love we are with you. And we're so excited for all of you to fall in love with her as well. Oh, we've got and a bunch you, of people jumping on. So mind you, because you're not finishing sentences. I'm sorry, I'm so excited. excited. So, um, so Brittany <laughs> is currently in Australia. And um, so it is early on Monday morning. 9.30 in the morning. 9.30 in the morning for um, for Brittany. So um, we were trying to get you. her to drink with us. Yeah, she might, she may, you know. I may. I may or may not drink with you. Um, I don't think my followers would be impressed. <laughs> it's not a good healthy habit, well, that's for sure. You know, we're we're bad influences in the morning. We are, but thank you so much for joining us on our early Monday morning. You and Bullseye, uh, if you could give give everyone a little bit of um, information, An in intro to yeah, you, yeah, who you are and where you came from. G'day everyone. My name is Brit. No, I'm just joking. I'm joking. <laughs> no, um. I am Brittany. Um, I have a business called The Pet Girl. So you could say that I am the pet girl. Um, this is my trusty feline bullseye. Um, she is a two-year-old domestic short hair cat that I rescued from the pound or from a rescue. Um, she is unbelievable. And yeah, hopefully we're going to show you some tricks. So in Australia, I live on the Gold Coast and I do, um, I help people with nutrition for their animals. I help people, um, with training. I specialize in dog training, but also do cat training and lots of dog cat, um, integration training as well with everyone. So yeah, that's a little bit of a background of me and Bullseye. That's a brave endeavor, the dog cat. Yeah, the dog cat is so fun. I love it. That is one of my most favorite types of training to do because people don't realize that um, just how trainable cats are. And so when you integrate them, we incorporate an element of training. And the cats absolutely love it. Um, and they love when things are on their terms. So it's great. It's fantastic. Yeah, I think we all I think we all know that our cats like things on on their terms. So when it right. comes to training a cat, we've got so many people Wait, on right now. Can, can I ahead. back it up just a second though? Because you have such an interesting background. Can you share a little bit about how you came to be like where the passion came from, right? Because you oh, yeah. So I used to be a police officer. I love look at look at you, Adrian. You just yeah. like love it. <laughs> Yeah, so I used to be a police officer and my husband and I, um, he at the time was owning, he owned gyms and he worked in gyms and believe it or not, I was a police officer and he owned a ladies only gym. So it was a bit of a, it was a bit random, but we, then we decided to stop what we were doing, um, leave our jobs and become pet food manufacturers. So then from pet food manufacturing, 
Um, There's a really long story in there, but then I decided that educating people was my passion. Um, and so, yeah, we, I left um, pet food manufacturing and we left our business and I pursued training and animal training um, and also nutrition for animals and education and stuff. Um, and yeah, I've been doing that ever since. And it's, um, I love it. I absolutely love it. I love training animals. So I do group classes and stuff now and um, we do how cool would it be to do cat group classes? How cool would that be? Oh, oh yes. I that would be so cool, right? You could bring your cat to like a training and like they're on little harnesses and stuff. That would be totally cool. Yes. That would be so. Your passion comes across so well in what you do. I, I'm sure it's why you're so good at what you do. You're so inspiring. Yeah, it's really inspiring because like you mentioned, a lot of us don't think about Training our cats. Training our cats. Or the only time it crosses our mind is when they're doing something that we don't want them to do. So Yeah, that's right. A little bit too, um, yeah, what are the benefits of training your cats in, in, a very, in a similar way of how you train your dogs? So something that's, um, that people don't take into consideration, which I think is really important, is biological fulfillment for cats. So I think when we, you know, the dog world seems to be a little bit more advanced in the sense that they understand, like we're starting to have a really huge shift in training, um, in training dogs and making sure that we're fulfilling them from a mental perspective, but also a biological perspective. So what that means is, is natural, naturally, what were they intended to do and how can we fulfill those needs and desires um, in safe and um you know, ways that they're not going to totally destroy the environment and all the native wildlife. Um, now, obviously, cats being predatory animals, they've got those, um, the, that chase drive and all that instinctual drive, but they're actually really intelligent at using their brains and at problem solving. Um, and really, once you know, I, I'm sure there are tons of people looking at their cat that's laying on the sofa that's licking their genitals and going, you're not that smart. How are you? How are you possibly trainable? But believe it or not, we have to actually teach them how to learn. Um, and that's something that I help people do with cats and help people understand is that you just have to teach them how to learn. And once they understand how to learn, you can start training them and getting them using their brains. And by using their brains, they're... Um, they're problem solving and they've got mental stimulation. And then that mental stimulation is going to help with, um, you know, fulfilling them and, and well, biologically fulfilling them, but also developing a relationship with them, um, you know, making them easier to live with um, and also keeping them busy and active throughout the day. Um, and so, yeah, that's, there's, it's massive, massive for, um, for mental health. So, I mean, if you think about it, if we were like sitting at home, not doing anything that we wanted to do and, you know, we're just sitting on the couch all day and we never got to exercise what we wanted to do in life, how depressed would we be? We'd be so depressed. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, like right now in America, at least it's not where you're at, but, um, but here, you know, the, the depression rates are, are skyrocketed because of COVID because people are doing That's that. They are sitting yeah. around and animals um, are actually getting maybe a little bit more stimulation because their humans are home. But, um, but for animals, we always talk about for our cats, how important it is to give them that mental stimulation for their overall health and well being too, right. just for yeah. their, you know, longevity of life. I mean, there are studies that show that, um, the cats that are, um, that, that are basically bored are stressed out and they have um, a high rate of urinary tract disease because of that are that's stim, uh, stimulated by stress. And that's because they're not using their, their mental stimulation as much as, um, as much as they should. So I think that's, yeah, I think training is awesome. Well, and I want to uh, let everyone know, I see so many people jumping on so many familiar faces that are here right now. I love you guys so much for joining us. Um, I do want to say that we're, so we're going to go through a couple of questions and uh, absorb some of your expertise. Uh, and then, and then I hope we have a little bit of time left at the end where if you guys, if you guys have questions, we'll open it up for a little Q and A so you can ask Brittany any questions you may have about cat training. And I cannot stop watching the two of you. I know it's so precious. This is like the most it's just perfect hanging out. Bullseye. Look at this. I'm in love. <laughs> she, um, 
She loves it. She honestly, I have such a connection with Bullseye and I think um, she is always like she hangs around me wherever I'm, you know, if I'm around in the day and stuff like that, she'll hang out. If I go and train the dogs, I let her out and she actually, um, she's out with me in my training area and she actually is training while I'm training the dogs. So when I'm out training my dogs, which I've got four dogs, so I train them very regularly they uh, she is on a place so on a place command so she's staying on like a boundary or like a an area that i've allocated to her um, and that's her job is to be there and be on that place and show impulse control and not intervene with the training so how long did that take not very long she's really treat motivated so i can do anything with her um in fact, she's the me a dirty look right now. Um, she, yeah, being treat motivated, this is kind of lends into training, right? So she, um, she is super treat motivated and super food motivated. And I, when I picked her, I actually, um, that was something that I, I looked for in a cat. So when I was looking, um, cause as you guys know, I had Gidget beforehand and she was a super trainable cat too. And I kind of jackpotted with her. But when I was looking for bullseye, I was looking for a cat that was food motivated, um, you know, relationship motivated and also food motivated as uh, sorry, toy motivated as well. So I wanted those three things. Sorry. Is there another cat? Oh my gosh. Maybe bullseye will see your cat on the screen and be all happy. She's, she's meowing at the door. There was oh. a, there You'll was have to teach us how to untra- like train her to not do that. <laughs> when we're on lives because she likes to do that when, whenever we're not giving her attention okay so how did you know when you first met her that she was treat motivated food motivated and relationship motivated yeah so when so first thing, the first thing that I did is obviously I spent time in the rescue room with all her litter um and of all the cats in there she was the crazy one like she was proper crazy and I was just like I have to have this oh, cat crazy. Um, yeah, she, I would get the toy out and I, she would chase the little, um, the teaser, the cat teaser toy. And I was like, okay, obviously she's got some chase in like some drive in her, um, and some, you know, predatory drive, which is great because a lot of people look at that and go, oh my God, that means my cat's going to want to go and chase birds and things like that. You know, that instinctually is in cats, whether you have a Persian or you have like a Bengal or something like that, that drive is in there somewhere you just have to ignite it. Um, and with bullseye, she had that ready and available. And it was great because I knew that I could, um, I wanted to have a cat that was toy motivated. So then I could exercise her properly um, and let her run around, chase the toy and, and whatever, and go through tunnels and things like that. And she does that. Um, when it came to food, I watched, I specifically watched for feeding time. And <laughs> look at her face. Face. I can't. <laughs> Hi, Angel Face. Hi, baby girl. Oh my God. She loves you so much. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. So when I was looking for food motivation, um, I watched feeding time and I wanted to see how like crazy she was at food time. And she was nuts. She was climbing up the door, like feed me now. And I, I actually like that to me. That's trainable. That's a trainable cat is a cat. That's like, I want food and I want it right now. Um, and then relationship, I wanted a cat that wasn't a sourpuss. Like I didn't want a cat that just was like, no, screw you, human. Like, and the first thing she did when I sat down is she came over to me and started like rubbing on me and like purring and doing that thing to me. And I was like, oh my God, she loves me. I have to get her. I have to. I just have to. She must be. <laughs> She's a perfect In your fit. Family. Okay, so so getting to the the food um, the food concept of this. So a lot of people are going to say um, they're going to say, well, sorry, my cat is not treat motivated, or my cat is not food motivated. And what we find is that a lot of times, um, many many actually, the overwhelming majority in the ninetieth, maybe ninety fifth percentile of cat parents free feed their cats because maybe their cats love food and they want to eat whenever they want, or maybe it's a convenience or or for whatever reason, they free feed kibble all day long to their cats. Um, And that, and so they're like, my cats aren't food motivated. What do you say? Or what do you like? What, how would you tell if I was your client and I said, Hey, my cat's not food motivated, but they, you know, they get food all day long. What would you say to me? Or how would you help coach me? Um, Okay. So first thing, if your cat is fat, 
um, and overweight, they're not going to be motivated by food, right? They're going to be like a bit slow and sluggish, even though probably them getting to the stage where they were overweight, it was because they just consumed too much food. So that's the first thing. You want an animal to, whenever you're training them, whether it be, you know, you're training birds, rats, dogs, whatever, it's the same principle applies. You want the animal to actually be hungry and going, this is my opportunity to get food. I want that food right now. Um, and that's the thing with bullseye, right? So the first thing that I made sure, and I've never done this with my cats that I've had, but the first thing that I made sure was that you're not free feeding because then your cat is a grazer. And then if your cat is grazing, they don't have that, uh, I need that urgency of, oh my God, this is my opportunity to get food. I have to, I have to participate because otherwise I won't get food. Um, and obviously it's a little bit different with cats as it with dogs with dogs if I wanted to motivate my dog by food then I would their, their training sessions would be their food so if they opted to not participate in that then they probably wouldn't get that food so until you know and that would carry on over a couple of days and then like a couple of days the dog's like oh my god this is my opportunity and they learn that it's just a process of learning with cats they're so routine, like they're so like, I need this, I need this, I need this, right? So you have to make sure that you, if you want to create a cat that's trainable, you need to make them motivated by food again. So I would remove the kibble completely, um, completely remove it, um, you know, and don't do the free feeding thing all day. Make your cat in the right weight, as in make sure they're fit and healthy. Like Bullseye is super fit and super healthy. Um, and she's not overweight, she's correct weight. Uh, and also as well, you have to remember about what you're feeding as well. So you need to make sure the food that you're feeding is high value. Um, you know, I use really high value food for bullseye. Sometimes I actually use her um, her fresh food. So I, you know, say if I'm using mince or something or like little um, chicken hearts or something, I'll actually dice that up into tiny little bits and use that as her food. Uh, she's way more inclined to participate if she's into the food that you're feeding. So if you're feeding your cat kibble and they're like, mm, I don't really like that, maybe you need to think about how you can, you know, um, increase the appeal of that food. And, you know, Bullseye's transition to a fully fresh diet and I wouldn't have it any other way. That's the, that's, she's an obligate carnivore. She requires meat to survive. And so I make sure that her, um, that's what I'm feeding in her treats. So today I actually have a bit of an opposite problem with her sometimes. So if the food is too high value, she's silly and she won't concentrate because she just wants the food. So I have to use an in-between. So what I'm using right now, I don't know if you guys have this in, I don't think you have this in America, but I'm using some air dried food. Yeah. So this is Zeewee. This is Zeewee Peak. This is the cat one. And these are little tiny, tiny little treats. Um, and then whatever the treat is, I chop it in half. So then she's not filling up really quickly. Oh, good. Good call. Okay. Now, when it comes to training, um, do you do training for everything? So like, like you said at the beginning, uh, a lot of people are like, I've trained my cat not to jump on the countertops or not to scratch furniture. Do you do training for that as well as other, other um, more mind stimulating things? Or are those two completely different things? And okay. is there a way to like train your cat to not scratch the furniture or jump on the counter? Here's a interesting concept. If you biologically fulfill your cat and you provide outlets for them to do things, the chances of them having problematic behavior is very minimal. So I don't have any problem behavior. What do you see? What's that? I don't have any problematic behavior with bullseye um, because she gets that training. So I don't have to worry about those things. Like I, because she understands like generalized boundaries and rules and things like that, it's easy for her um, and I've done that through say trick training like most people would be like how the hell do you get your cat to stay in one place because she knows boundaries and rules and you know I have structure to training those translate into real life scenarios so for example her being able to sit here is because she knows how to sit on a place so I've put her on a place she knows that she needs to sit there does that make sense yeah, it well, does, but it's still us, but, mind blowing. But but what is what do you mean by a place? Can you explain that to to those that are like I don't know? Yeah. So like place training, the way it's the same like bed training, like as if you know like when you have a dog and you train them to stay on their bed or on their place, it would be the same with a cat. So Bullseye understands that she needs to stay on the chair. I've put her on the chair. She needs to stay there until she's released. Otherwise, 
So those same concepts and principles and things like that, that I apply in like trick training, they apply to real life training because it's easy because I can get her to stay, um, you know, to stay. Do you actually use verbal commands? Like this is your place. So with place for, if I put her somewhere and I tell her to wait, then she'll generally wait that, that that's when she knows that she has to stay there. I don't have a set command like place because my place changes and my, I don't want her just to associate place with one specific spot. So one of the things that I use as well is hop up um, and hop up means for bullseye that, oh, come on, come on, you want to come on here? Um, hop up means for bullseye that she has to hop up on a, um, on a surface that I point to and she'll go and hop up on it. And I can show you that. I've got chairs set up so you can see that she'll, um, she'll do that. Oh, my God. Okay, I yeah. So we do have some questions coming in um, about, uh, well, maybe, so we were just talking about food. This is actually a good question. Marissa asks, can you teach a cat to food lure like you can dogs, like teach them following treats is good? Is yeah. that something that you incorporate? Yeah, I'll show you. Oh, no, that's just, yeah. Come on. She knows she's not allowed on the bench right now, so she's like. What am I doing here? Hey, come here, look. I'll show you on the table. Come over here, hop up. All right, let's see if she'll do it. We'll just, we're just renovating, so be, all right. Hop up. Okay, is that on the table? Yes, you can see. Yeah. All right. <laughs> right. So you can see. Yes. So she understood that food law. I lured her into a sit. I did it the same way. It depends on the cat. Like some cats, some cats are going to be. Good girl. So some cats are going to be more food um, able to take a lure than others. So with her, because she doesn't bite me, she's really easy to lure. But with a cat that say is quite bitey, they might bite you. So it might be really hard to teach them that trick because, or to lure with food. And that's where you'd use something like a target stick. Um, so I've got, a target. yeah. So this little bad boy is a target stick, right? Now it's got a little yellow ball on the end and I, hopefully I'll show you. Bullseye, hop up. So bullseye knows. Yes. So bullseye knows to target the end of the stick with her nose, right? Yes. So did you see that? So I'll yeah. Yeah, bullseye here. And she actually pushes it with her nose, right? Now, for a cat that doesn't like luring, you can use this because once they get the concept of moving, going through the lure, like instead of following the lure, they'll follow the target and they'll go back and do things like you would with the food lure. So it depends. There's two options there. You can either use a food lure like you would with a dog or you can use something like a target stick. Oh, my God. I thought that cat jumped up in my house. I just was like... <laughs> She finally got bored of uh, trying to get into the garage. Hey, baby girl, you want to come see how to pull that? Come here, baby yeah. girl. Who's that? Who's that? What is it? What's... Hi. Say hi. Excuse me, Vixen. I am not asking you to participate. Right. Oh, my God, Vixen. Obviously not trained. <laughs> Look, she's like looking through the window. Like, what is going I'm on in there? This. Yeah, we yeah. got to with you young lady yes. yes we do yes okay so something that's really important now there's something that's really important that i didn't go over which i'm going to explain now because i think this is really important for you understanding about cat trick training and things like that right so when we're talking about tricks we have to have a way for the cat to know how they've done the right thing all right now in just then when i did that you may have heard me say the word yes is that right did you hear that yes. Yeah. Now, what I use for bullseye is I actually, the main way that I train her, bullseye, hop up. Oh, awesome. Janny just asked, do you use a clicker as well? 
Yeah, so I'm going to get into that now. So I use with Bullseye, we'll see if she'll do it. Hopefully she'll do, do, do a good demonstration. She's down there. So did you see her reaction? So when I clicked, right, when she's distracted, um, when I click Bullseye knows that it means food, right? So if I, here, I know you want it here, Bullseye, come over here. Go get that. So you watch her reaction. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> right? So normally with Bullseye, if I click, it means that she'll get food. So what I did, you, you, the clicker doesn't just mean that. You have to install the clicker, yeah? And it's the same way that you install a yes marker. So when you start out, what you'll do is you'll click and you'll feed your cat. One treat. And what you want to do is you want to click and you want to click and feed when they're doing random things. Now, ideally what you want is you want to do this in an environment where it's not distracting. So like a bathroom is really good where there's not like lots of things for them to investigate. The first, before you start using a clicker, you need to install it. So you need to, um, you need to do this a couple of times until the response that you get is that response where the cat Here's the click and they look to you to get their reinforcement. Once you've paired this, then that's when you can start marking and rewarding tricks. So when I, when I say marking, what I'm talking about is I'm <laughs> marking the exact moment when the cat did what I wanted. So for example, if it was the target stick, the second her nose touched the end of the target stick, I reinforced her and I clicked. Now, this works off classical conditioning. Pairing this with food is what's called classical conditioning. And then you can start using it to shape behavior. Um, I really like the clicker because it's precise and it's the same every time. Whereas a yes marker obviously is varied in the way that you feel, how you're projecting your voice, you know, and it changes as you, as you change. And this is going to be a really good example with bullseye. So you can see now she's starting to slow down. She's starting to be like, mm, 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 right? And what, what did you say? Is she getting full? Yeah, I, I don't know if she will ever get full, but she, um, she's starting to get over it because we've been doing it for a little bit now. And that's just something that is super important when you're training a cat is that unlike dogs, you can push them a little bit and you can kind of, I mean, you shouldn't be doing half an hour training sessions, but you can push the dog a little bit until they get bored and they'll start offering other things. With Bullseye, as soon as she doesn't want to do it, she's just like, mm, whatever. And so my goal is to always end on her wanting more, like her going, no, I want to do this. I want to do more. Um, and so it can be really frustrating when you're training a cat, especially in tricks, because <clears throat> sometimes the tricks don't, um, you don't get anywhere in a session because it's like the cat kind of did it. And sometimes they don't want to. Um, and you have to respect that and you have to understand that that's okay. They don't want to do it. Um, and then, yeah, you just have to try again a little bit later or move on. She's so you, a find that, you find that cats are, are harder to train than dogs? Oh. Yes. See, I find the dogs long to train with me. Like they, as soon as I go in my training area or out and about, or I get my treat catch, they're like, oh my God, this is the best thing in the entire world. Whereas I think with Bullseye, what she's thinking is I'm kind of hungry. So this is really convenient for me right now because I get to get some food. Right. So I think it's, it's all got to do with as well as you know where their hunger is at where they're at like cats are generally throughout the day a little bit lazy they kind of just do their own thing and and chill and relax and they're more active at night so I tend to try and do training sessions in the like in um at dusk and in the evening because I find that she's way more like yeah come on let's do this versus doing it in the morning when she's like this <laughs> What kind of time frame are we looking at? I know Dana mentioned that she was able to use here on the live. She was able to do clicker training uh, for her cat. It took about two weeks to get her to where the comment go. What'd you say? I saw it fly by. Um, I taught Kevin. Kevin is a girl. I taught Kevin to sit in about two weeks with clicker training. What do, what do you find 
as far as uh, training time. If you're, you know, whether it's, you know, getting them to do a trick, like roll, you get her to like roll over or high five or what's the yeah. time to get them to perform a desired behavior? Well, it actually depends on the cat because and it depends on how they learn. So for example, with your cats that are super intelligent and, and are um, like quite trainable, like your bangles, they're going to be easier to teach tricks because they're more motivated to do stuff. Bullseye, um, she is really good at offering behavior or picking up behavior but where we get stuck and where we find a challenge is when we start adding a cue because when I start adding a cue it's no longer about her offering behavior and now it's me dictating the pace and that's when she doesn't like it so when she can say for example if I put an object out like I put like a box and I wanted her to go in the box right I wait for her to offer that behavior to do that herself and then when she does it I click now, when I put a cue on it and I say in the box and I'm at the stage where she's doing it reliably and she thinks it's her idea and then so I add the cue in the box, that's when she's like, mm, I don't really feel like doing it anymore because you want me to do it and not because I want to do it. Ah, so, Yeah, so it's true that, that the, the, the cats actually train us more than we train the cats. Oh. Yeah, they definitely can. I think that when you are setting out to do a skill, you have to break it up into micro little bits. So like most people will think, oh, okay, I'm going to do a skill. I'm going to go straight. I want my cat to jump through my arms. So they, so they just start putting their arms everywhere and thinking, oh, the cat will know. I can just like lure them through. But when I'm ever I'm doing a complex skill like that, I, hey, don't do that. She's licking me. I hate when they lick you. Really? <laughs> oh my God, it's my favorite. Oh, it freaks me out. Her tongue freaks me out. I don't know where that's been. What have you been doing? Nah. <laughs> um, she, um, yeah, whenever I have a complex skill, it really depends on how, like how I can break it down. That is so precious. She's giving you kisses. What about if? If I licked her, she wouldn't. She wouldn't like it. Let me lick you. No, actually, why, why she don't probably you, would. Why don't you try it for us? <laughs> you saw it here, people. All right, she's molting. <laughs> um, she probably wouldn't care, and then she'll be all offended at me, and she'll have to go clean her entire body because I touched her. So, yeah, yeah. That happens. Oh my Look, she's gone to cleaning herself. See? Yep. <laughs> She loves you. That's so cute. It's like, no, but it's definitely. Yeah. Um, so we had a question here. This is a good question. We're talking about the clicker training and um, where'd it go? I'm sorry, you guys were missing some. Oh, Cindy said, uh, my cat is 10 years old now, maybe too old to learn with the clicker. No. Nah. That was going to be my question. Is there an age that is either best I mean Obviously, it's better to start the relationship early and start, you know, training them as really young, young, young cats, like kittens, because then they they develop that relationship and they're not stuck in their ways and you can really shape and mold their behavior as opposed to when they're old, they're kind of pretty stuck in their ways. So any new thing, they're like, what are you making me do? Um, it just takes, you just have to have a bit more patience, that's all, but you can certainly do it as long as your cat is... Um, like mobile and is, you know, it doesn't have any joint issues or anything like that. Like that's always something that I make sure before you start doing, you know, start training your cat, just make sure that from a physiological level, they're okay to start training. Um, Cause yeah, I mean like bullseye can jump over multiple jumps. Like she can do like, you know, um, she can do multiple jumps and stuff, which um, I think if you're not physically able, like you can't expect a cat that's not physically able to do that. Or for example, overweight. So yeah, I've got your hair everywhere. Thank you. Well, you did lick your pussy. Wow. <laughs> okay, so I. Uh, Mom. <laughs> I love it. I'm um, gonna get that pure out of the fridge. I uh, had a question. <laughs> oh. I threw her so, off. Yeah, so people are asking though where to get it. I think they covered it on here. You can get those clickers. You can get them at pet stores. You can get them on Amazon. Oh yeah, They're super easy and super cheap too. They're not expensive. I think I think ours were like five bucks. Yeah, for and we two. got two. Right. Yeah. Um. So, 
some of the things I, I know oh, that you've got four beautiful dogs as well. Um, was it difficult to do that introduction? What kind, what do you do as far as like integrative training? Because I know there's a lot of you know multi pet households out there, dogs and cats. We can't even. We had a little lost dog in our neighborhood yesterday, and we did not even consider bringing the dog in because it would freak out our cats. How do you begin to approach that kind of integration for anyone who has an issue with their cats and dogs or is thinking about and adopting uh, another species? So it depends. Um, my approach is different depending on what you're doing. So if you've got a pack of dogs and you're introducing a cat to a pack of dogs, it, my approach is different as opposed to introducing a, a like a puppy or a, a dog to an existing cat. So um, with Bullseye, I'll explain what I did with Bullseye. So when I got Bullseye home, obviously I settled her in, made sure she wasn't stressed. Um, I put her in an area that she could visibly have access, like could visibly see the dogs moving about, but I never drew any attention to, um, to the dogs being there. Um, and then what I did is I, I gave the dogs a blanket that Bullseye had slept on and Bullseye a blanket that the dogs had slept on. Um, and yeah, she was pretty inquisitive. She sniffed it and she was, you know, whatever. Um, the great thing when you're training, so the good thing is, is that Bullseye obviously has a yes marker and I installed that as soon as she was a kitten and my dogs also have a yes marker as well. So what I did is I made sure that when I introduced Bullseye to the dogs, I did it one at a time, like per dog. And I started with my softest dog um, and my most neutral dog. So the one thing that I made sure of is that my dogs were able to maintain a boundary. So the way that I started it was I actually put my dogs on a, a bed boundary or in a crate and I let Bullseye be the first one to initiate making, you know, um, you know, right. making that contact. And my dogs knew I had a leave it cue. My dogs had already seen a cat. So they were pretty like, yeah, they were used to Gidget. So they were like, oh yeah, another one of these things. Um, and they were, you know, they were fine they um they just kind of ignored her and bullseye did that thing where they go <laughs> <laughs> and hop sideways yeah yes, that thing <laughs> <laughs> um and she was so small so it was like the cutest thing i've ever seen in my life it was like and she like went off and i had like tunnels and a tower and stuff for her so if she wanted to get away she could but it really helped that my dogs were just not interested in chasing her. They just didn't care. They couldn't give two, they couldn't have given two shits about her. So um, I did that. And then I slowly, as time went on, I slowly, like I'd let the dogs in the house and I'd have bullseye in the house and I'd let them just walk around. And I am, uh, if the, if the dogs uh, like go up and sniff her and she hisses at them I allow that because it's like you know what she's commute that's her communication that's like a growl um, and but that being said if she went out of her way to annoy them like went over to them to like whack them or something like that then she got time out she was put in time out because I don't want the dogs to think that I'm never advocating for them and that it's the cat that rules the roost it's a very um, it's a very balanced structure here so the no one rules the roost like no one is in charge the cats aren't in charge of the or the cat's not in charge of the dog the dogs aren't in charge of the cat like every animal is their own being and they do their own thing um and yeah I slowly introduced them that way and just gave bullseye a bit more liberty and gave them a bit more liberty with her and then yeah they just kind of got over the fact that they were seeing each other I used my marker to reward the animals for doing the right thing so you know showing interest but being calm about it um and so on and so forth so yeah, and now Pepsi licks her and she hates it. Well, she doesn't, I don't think she hates it because she doesn't do anything about it. Um, she'll walk past and Pepsi will go and loves her, licks her all over. It's weird. Do they Freaks snuggle? Me. That's so cute. Bullseye will, yeah, she has different relationships with different dogs. So she will sleep on like say something that the dogs are on or something like that. She's not a snuggler. Um, I think because they like to lick her and she's like, ew, gross. She's also very dog-like and she's also very, um, she's very confident and she's got very good communication skills. Like she doesn't go straight for a clip. She'll actually go like, don't stop like that really slow. What a um, 
Yeah, and it's really good for when I'm introducing dogs that come to my house for training and I'm introducing um, that to her. Now, on the flip side of that, when I introduce Vixen, my new puppy, who's a working border collie, so a very high prey drive, um, and I introduced, I did a similar thing, except this time, instead of letting the dogs in bullseye space, I took bullseye to Vixen's space. So I changed it around. Now I started with Vixen on lead and I used my yes marker to reward her for being calm. But Bullseye was kind of at the stage where she was older. So she used to allow dogs to sniff her, her bum and things like that. So when I could see that she was showing some really nice calm behaviors, I kind of just had little supervised meetings. Um, and Bullseye was put in timeout a few times for being a menace to Vixen. Like she would jump into Vixen's puppy pen and um, go crazy. Like, you know how, like, like deliberately go crazy, like <laughs> stick her up um, and then run out. And then I'd be like, bullseye, what are you doing? Don't do that. And then Vixen would get all worked up. And But they have a really good relationship now. They actually play with each other. They chase each other around the car um, and like, it's equal, like Bullseye chases her, she chases Bullseye um, and they love it. And Binti, my Sheltie, my poor little Sheltie, whenever Bullseye gets an opportunity, she likes to scare her. Like she jumps out and scares her and then runs away, but she doesn't like do anything. She just goes and then runs away. Oh. <laughs> my poor little Sheltie is so, she, she's just like, <laughs> <laughs> Baby. Um, I know. Okay, follow up question. I think we've got. Um, I know we had a couple other questions. I'm going blank know. on I'm them not right now. I'm seeing any of the but questions. I don't know why. Dina said when you're training two kittens, so when you're when you're dealing with multiple cats, is it best to train them separately or tips for training both at the same time? Separately first, um, until they can develop impulse control, you want to train them separately because if one cat's doing something random then and you're clicking and they're both got a clicker, then they're going to be reinforced for things that they don't really know what they're doing. Um, yeah, I train them separately until they've got impulse control. And I don't even, I would rarely train two kittens to be doing this, like two cats to be doing the same thing. Um, I would put them together when one had the ability to maintain a position. So like I said, if I put bullseye on a place and I train the dog, she can maintain that place. If I, I would do that, if I had the cats, I would do that too. But that being said, I've only ever had one cat at a time. So I don't necessarily um, know how I would train two cats or how they would go. That In that being said though, I do have multiple dogs and I do that with my dogs. So they have to be on a boundary or a bed when I'm training another dog or in a crate. Um, and Bullseye's crate trained as well. So she can go in a crate as well. She goes in the crate with the dog. Oh my. Oh, wow. That was so going to be my next question. We have so much to learn. Uh, yeah. And you're holding it right now. Alicia asked, uh, what do you call the ball tip one thingy? What did you call that? Target stick. <laughs> I love you said that so sexually. So Target stick. Uh, is, <laughs> is that what we look for? Like, is that what we would- a target. It's a target stick. It's a target stick. Is do that you, what we would search for on Amazon? Or did you yeah, make that? Wait, hang on here. Um, no, it's called, I'm sure it's called that. Like, wait, hang on. A target stick. You can look for one of these on Amazon. They're like a little bit, I think, I think they're really cheap. But yeah, a target stick. On a target oh my stick. god, you're that is so, such an, you're an, an so awesome. good. <laughs> an American you're not accent. in Australia at all. <laughs> Around the corner. <laughs> you're a you that's a really good American that accent. That was awesome. That was target. Awesome. Target. Oh my okay, god. Okay, so do we, are there any more questions or should we end with some final tips? Uh, hold on, I want to see. They're talking about um me uh, us getting into the oh, porn. Kelly market. asked. What did you use for her time out? What does time out oh, yeah. mean? That's a great question. That is a great question. So, okay. Biggest misconception for, um, I think, for training cats um, is that they should never, ever, ever experience any form of punishment ever. Now, when we're talking about punishment, I'm not saying we go and whack our cat or use a spray bottle or anything like that. Definitely not. But what I'm talking about is that bullseye has she gets FOMO she has the fear of missing out so she's doing something and she doesn't um 
you know, she wants to be around us or she wants to be in a specific area, I will actually just pick her up and take her to a room, like her end room. She's got her own room and I will lock her in the end room and she'll spend 20, 30 minutes in there. Um, and that, I use that. So like if she's, for example, if she's out and I'm preparing food and she keeps climbing on the bench, she gets one chance. And if I tell her hop off the bench and she doesn't listen or she hops off and then she gets back on, that's showing me that she is too over aroused to be put in, like to be in the situation. So I'll remove her and put her in her room and lock her in her room. Um, and she won't come out until I feed her dinner. And then usually what I'll do is I'll even delay feeding her dinner. I'll take some time and I'll feed it a little. I'll take my time. I don't like delay it by hours, but I will take my time. So do you find so, that, do you that, find that a as a very, love. yeah, do you find that as a, as a good disciplinary um, action, probably maybe the only or the best disciplinary action for cats? Is it yeah, bull. Yeah, so I mean, for bullseye, she understands like uh uh, like if I say uh uh like that, she understands that. So that's a verbal punisher. Um, she really she understands it, and she also doesn't like upsetting us. So, um, you know that sometimes is enough for her. But yeah, I will use timeout, so negative punishment to. Um, just to number one, if she's being an idiot and she's running around like around the dogs or doing something that's like she's being a dick, like in other words, then she'll go in timeout and I will put her in timeout. Um, and so yeah, that's a great, I think that's great. Crazy. Yeah. Uh, so um, Barbara asked, what do you do for cats that are not food motivated at all? You make them food motivated. <laughs> so I would have a look. I would have a look and I would see, um, I would go, all right, what is it that is making them not food motivated? So cats are food motivated because they eat their dinner, right? They eat their food. So they are to a degree food motivated. You just have to harness that to your training, right? So for me, I would use my cat's breakfast at the time that they're normally about to have breakfast. I would actually use their breakfast as their meal um, and use that as their training. Um, it will take them a bit of time. So when you're, when you're going to do that, don't expect them to be, um, I guess, like going to do backflips for you, but you could start installing your clicker with their breakfast. Um, and then also as well, if your cat's overweight and also what you're feeding your cat. So your cat's trainability is going to be impacted by their digestive system and their mental health. If they've got poor mental health, then they're not going to be likely to want to train with you and develop relationship. So if you're feeding your cat a super highly processed diet, I would be assessing that and going, all right, what can I do to get my cat's mental health better? Um, and how can I do that? How can I improve their gut health? Yeah, there's and a that goes to fresh correlation training. between gut and brain health, right? So when it comes to yeah. training or anything like that, yeah. that's going to be super important. I'm okay, so because like, ta -da, I'm moving because my internet is not very good. Uh, ah, we've just, I know this spot. Are we going to meet Vixen? Was she the one that was? Um, Vixen, can you hop up? Hop up. Big stretch. Come on, up, up. This is Vixen. Say hello, Vixen. Who's that? And poor little Vixen has just come into season today. Oh, oh, wow. She's growing up. Yeah. She's very smoochy, aren't you? And then <laughs> you all... Smoochy. Um, Marissa asked, can you ask what type of training she uses, dogs included? As in know. what do you mean by that? Oh, I was gonna. I thought that it was something that you, I thought you would understand the question. Like, Are is there, there a training? Like, is there like a training like program that you went through and you use like this specific type of training? So method? I, um, my training style. Everyone like wants to conform to a particular training style. Like people always say, "Oh, what kind of trainer are you? Are you a purely positive trainer? Are you a um a balanced trainer? Do you follow Caesar Milan? All that kind of stuff." Um, I don't have I don't pin myself to anything because I think that it's really unfair to be fixated on a method when you have a, a an individual animal in front of you that may require something different so for example um, if I've got a really soft dog I may only use purely positive for that dog 
um, because maybe timeouts would be too much for them. For Vixen, she, um, she, what works really well for her is if she's misbehaving is if I do use a timeout because she does get FOMO. So using that, um, that distance and that timeout to calm her down uh, tends to work really, really, really well. Um, I use a lot of, for dogs particularly, I'll use, and even cats, I'll use guidance a lot. So um, like I, my dogs aren't force free. I don't approach training force free because I think that um, there is stress in life. And especially with dogs, they have to, they have to, there's an iota of stress that comes with being a dog and also with being a cat. Like for example, um, you know, my Sheltie has to get groomed. So it's not fair to, um, to never ever put my hands or or guide my dog or hold my dog into a position and never ever ever look at making them uncomfortable because when she goes to get groomed she's going to be held there they are going to clip her nails they are going to trim and she has to deal with that stress so my whole training the way I train is about helping dogs in a really positive motivational way and with cats to get used to being under stress but also uh, knowing how to have the coping mechanisms to to deal with that um, and it's the same with the cats you know one of the biggest reasons why we were able to keep uh, tick prevention off our cats was because we were able to place them on their back and they were able to show relaxed compliance and we were able to search them for ticks and things like that um, and you know it's the same with like checking their teeth and things like that they they able to do that um, and they're able to get tighter tests and blood drawn from them because they're so comfortable with being able to lift their limbs and do whatever. Right. Cause you trained them to, to be comfortable with it. Yeah. So that's the goal. Yeah. 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 I mean, we have questions every single day. It's like, my cat hates the car and I, you know, I, we, oh. we have to, like, I just got another one today. Like somebody's moving. It's like basically across country. It's a long trip. Lots of people are moving right now. And it's like, how do I keep my cat calm? You know, and one of the things that we that we advocate for and that we do now with especially our younger and we cats need to do more. is is taking them out in the car, like like and then and then rewarding them with a treat when they come home or rewarding them in some way, realizing that the the car ride doesn't always end in this bad a vet situation. Visit or yeah. Yeah. Bullseye so, loves the car. So she <laughs> except when it's a long trip and she needs to toilet. She's not very happy about that. Um, but the other day we took all the dogs because we go on off-leaf bush walks a lot and um, we took all the dogs in the car and we got to our destination. So I had four dogs in the car. I got to the destination and Bullseye, we opened the car and let all the dogs out and Bullseye was like, okay, my turn and got out. And I'm like, what the hell? How did she get in the car? <laughs> what is she doing? Why is she coming? And um, I didn't have her harness. So I had to put her back in the car and take her home. But like a 20 minute trip, like she was just in there hanging out with the dogs in the dog cage. Like cats are smart. She is they so smart. smart. Oh, she well, loves here's, it. Here's an interesting follow-up question. And I think you kind of touched on this um, when you were looking at the beginning. Well, question was is a follow-up from barbo who said that her cat is not food motivated at all and how would you approach that and you said i would make them food motivated right like really work on evaluating why it is that this cat is not motivated by food at all um and barbara said the cat has a really stuffed nose she has some fiv stuff and she doesn't smell well so i think this would probably hit on what you were saying earlier as far as evaluating the help. physiological condition um and seeing what we can do to help bring them into a place where they where they are healthy enough to train and i think obviously fiv is a FIV. tough tough i mean that's yeah. a tough hurdle but knowing what the issue is is going to make it easier to help try to solve that and then work towards the next level and the other thing though is is that like the, her cat has to eat, right? Barbara's cat has to eat. So that's where when animals are not food motivated, I go, okay, well, let's assess that. Is it that they, they will eat their food and they're okay to eat their food? Or is it that they don't necessarily have a relationship with eating the food with you in the picture? So is it that Barbara's cat is only, only looks at food in the context of a plate or a bowl? Or is it that 
when Barbara's trying to train her cat, the cat's like, hey, I don't understand this pitch up because you now, the food's now coming from you. So if that was the case, then I would actually look at starting to do a little bit of hand feeding um, and just get the cat used to eating out of your hand and using, again, using their dinner or using their breakfast. So then that way, Barbara is now in the picture when it looks, when the cat looks at the food picture. Do you know what I mean? And that's the thing you got to do with cats is that sometimes like you'll train them in a specific room and then you'll take them to a new place and you'll go and train it and they like have no idea. It's because they're quite literal. So if you train them in one specific spot, they're only going to learn that skill in that specific spot. So with bullseye, whenever I have a trick and the same with my dogs, once I know the trick is at a really good reliability, I will take it to different places and go back to the beginning and make sure that they understand it and so they can generalize it as opposed to only doing it in set contexts. And that's where you kind of saw it in, in the house, right, is that when I got bullseye on the bench and I started doing luring with her, she's like, whoa, 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 I'm not allowed on the bench. Why are you putting me on here? Um, and that's why she's like, I can't do this. But then as soon as I put her on the table or something like that, then she's, you know, look, she's not really allowed on the table either. So whatever, but she's up there more than she's on the bench. And so, um, yeah, that's, see how you can, gen you, you start trying to generalize it and then the cat learns. But had I taken you to my training area and she would have been like, you know, bit of this, bit of that, you know right. what I mean? Yeah, that makes so, sense. And also just for my own edification here. So a bench in Australia is actually like a kitchen table. Like a countertop. Is that what you a call it? Okay. Yeah. And then earlier when you <laughs> said we were doing the integrate, you were talking about integrated, uh, integrative training for dogs and cats. And you were talking about when you're introducing bullseye and uh, you actually had introduced her first to your softest dog. I literally thought you meant a soft dog. <laughs> Come on. And then later you said something about a, a dog that really needs positive, you know, reinforce that they're that they're soft. So you meant that they're Yeah, like temperament. temperament. Like temperament. So right. like Binti. Binti, come here. Come here. Come here, Bougie. Good girl. All right. Good girl. This is Binti. Hi, Hi baby. Binti. Oh my goodness. What Are a you beautiful sweet babe. angel. Are you derping at us, sweet baby girl? She's snuggling. Oh, oh so she it. is physically probably the softest. She's softest. Yeah. She's a bit like a swamp dog at the moment because she's um she's likes to swim in roll in kangaroo poo. But <laughs> oh, can you stop snuggling me for a minute? I just <laughs> okay. So Binti is the kind of dog that is, she's gentle and she's soft and she doesn't like to upset and she doesn't like to make mistakes. So whenever I'm training with Binti, I've got to take that into consideration. Whereas when I'm training with Vixen, she makes a mistake and she is like, yeah, come on, what is it? I'll do it better next time, you know? Um, and she will push me harder if I withhold reinforcement like if I withhold reinforcement from Vixen, Vixen's like, what is it? Come on. What is it? Oh, let's, oh, let's do it again. I want to do it again. I want to have, what do you want to do? You want to lick me. I know that's what you want to do, right? She's like, um, what, what can I possibly do to achieve that reward? And she will start offering all types of weird behaviors. Whereas with Binti, if I withhold a reward, she's like. Yeah. And that that works and oh. she will go and jump off a bridge i'm not even lying she will she'll do it <laughs> oh what a sweet baby i have to say so denise has an adventure cat named uh billy and she said yeah. just to, to your point of um of finding yourself with a with a car full of dogs and the cat the other day she said i keep an extra harness and leash in the car for billy all the time so maybe you i should know think about <laughs> Yeah, we bullseye. We've tried so we've trained bullseye to follow us and come with us, and we've put that into like that off. That's obviously off lead on our property. We're really lucky. We live on six acres, so she she comes exploring with us in the on the property. Um, the next stage of that is she's harness trained as well. So the next stage of that is allowing her on a flexi and making sure that she understands that we keep moving. Like you don't get to stop and go and hide in it and you know try and get wildlife like we're, we're moving like we keep going that's how we walk so yeah she's um the other thing too I need to get her cardio fitness up like 
sometimes, you know, she runs really fast. She's a sprinter, but then she, you know, she gets a little pant on. And so I need to really work on her cardio because otherwise she's like this. Yeah. <laughs> that's what our, that's what some of ours do after a case of the zoomies. Yeah. <laughs> it, it? it trips you out when you don't know the cat's pant and they do it and you're like, what's wrong with my cat? I rang my vet when she did it. I was like, <laughs> yes. panting. What is that? Yep. Yep. We did the same. With uh, yeah. with Zoro, yeah, when he was little, and Jack yeah. has done it a couple times too now, where he's just just massive zoomies running oh, all over the and place. And we've built, we've like this year, we built a catwalk in our house. So there's okay. like beside me right here, there's like a like one, like two, steps three, four, that five, go five, up, six, seven, seven steps that and go then, up, and they're all shelves, and then it goes up over, and then another up over, and then over, and then like over. yeah, um, and so. Mm-hmm another up over and so there's like this whole thing and then they can come running down the stairs so they end up doing this thing where they just go running up all the way around then down the stairs then up then around then down the stairs and then and then yeah they'll end up panting and 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 being being a little too crazy but anyway so i know i, I think that's gonna, to go. yeah i think that, i know we're I running out of time that, anything that we missed and i yeah i just would tips. love to hang out and like wait until an appropriate time of the day where you could drink with us um <laughs> Because I love and miss you so much. Any any little tips or um, Tricks. takeaways? Yeah, that that you want to leave us with. Yeah. So keep the session short. Make sure that if you are going to train your cat, that you're keeping the sessions really, really short. And look for the cat in front of you. So if they're starting to be disinterested, end it. You want to you want to make sure. Yogi, no, come here, Yogi. Bear. Quick. The mailman's just arrived, so we could experience. The mailman's just arrived and he's just delivered and we've got some huffing and puffing going on. Thank you. Good girls. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, keep the session short. Look for the cat in front of you. If they're starting to be disinterested, you've gone too far, you want to leave on a high and make sure that the cat was like, oh, my God, I want more. Um, don't make the skills too complex. Break them down. So break them down into, like, little micro steps and spend as long as you need on each specific step. Um yeah make your cat food motivated don't leave kibble out don't yes. feed it up. okay yeah. and then we've got the <laughs> clicker so stuff if we want to go get some training yeah. toys to help us it's the clicker and it's the clicker. target one stick target stick, stick. <laughs> kind of self-explanatory target stick. yeah target target, one target stick. stick get yourself a target stick and a clicker Target, Target stick, stick and a clicker. clicker. You heard it here, people. <laughs> Where are you going, ladies and gentlemen? Yes. I am so grateful for this afternoon slash morning Thanks with you. Me. Slash evening for slash us. Evening. Yeah. yeah, whatever it is, whatever yeah. time we're all in. Um, we Thank really you. appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. It's always lovely to chat with you ladies and all the cat people. I love oh, it. I love you so much. Yeah, you're Your passion amazing. is really infectious. And I, and I feel... You know, we've got cats that do a couple of little things, but it's inspiring to think about the things we can do to help stimulate them and and really enhance their what did you call it? Their biological needs. Yeah, and yeah, that's mental exciting. stimulation, yeah. mental health. Yeah. So so there Thank you go. You. So if anybody needs to, um, if they want to find the pet girl, you can click on the link in the description. We did tag the pet girl here. Um, Brittany, is there any other place that you would um, have someone reach out to you if they had a question about training their cats or uh, the, the health of their cats or anything? No, you can just go to my Facebook. Um, my website's in, in, um, in pro, like we're working on it at the moment. So it's a bit all over the shop. So yeah, you can just message me on Facebook or you can go to my Instagram, which is the same at I am the pet girl. Um, but yeah, reach out. If you've got cool videos, send them to me. Um, I'm hoping to do some cat training courses coming up. So oh, um, how cool. yeah, so like step-by-step -step stuff, we just got to get, get going and do it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like like everything, right? There it is. Okay. We lost Facebook for a minute. Sorry, you guys. Everyone's saying thank you, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you I'm so, so much. I'm so excited for them to keep in touch with you. And you are an absolute pleasure. We love you so much. Love you. Um, for those of you guys, um, we are doing a back-to-back -back live, so we will be on our Facebook page in about 20 minutes for um, our Cat Tip Review, normal Sunday night live, but we also have really big news, so do join us then. Um, oh, and I'm going to say it. <laughs> it, may, it may call for a drink. Yeah. <laughs> For, for a drink. It's getting uh, close to noon over there for you. So <laughs> it's five o'clock somewhere. 10 30. I think I need to 
have a coffee first and then I'll go and I'll go and get the Franjo. There you All go. Right. Or, or throw do, something in that coffee. Do, do Why you not? Do. Uh, anyway, okay, Brittany, we love you so much. Love Everyone you. else, we'll see you we very soon. See you we soon. love you guys too. Mwah. We'll see you soon, Brittany. Love you. Thank you. Have a good day. Happy Monday. Bye, guys.